With the increase in the use of mobile devices, short cultural contents are gaining popularity. What is the new trend in the cultural and economic sectors that has been fitted into the taste of modern people? The informal WTO ministerial gathering was held on the margins of the World Economic Forum in Davos. What was discussed at the meeting and what is the way forward for the Doha Development Agenda Work Program? Hybrid solar cell has improved upon drawbacks of existing solar cells. We will introduce the world's most efficient hybrid solar cell technology developed by Korean researchers. Household robots are evolving along with the convergence with information and communications technology. The present and future of home robots that have established themselves as the main platform of smart homes. North Korea boasts a 100% employment rate? We will find out the truth behind this and what jobs are popular in the communist nation. Hello, I'm Andrew Salmon and welcome to BizLine. Now, Koreans are among the world's most enthusiastic users of smartphones and resultant mobile trends are spawning new social phenomena. And one of these is the so-called snack culture. In this mobile trend, consumers enjoy cultural content, video clips, webtoons, web novels, in small bite-sized chunks. And this trend has now escaped the virtual space and is actually impacting the real consumer economy. So let's take a look at a few examples of this snack culture that was birthed by consumers in the online space and which they're now yearning for in the offline world. Shorter and shorter. New content people can consume like snacks are becoming a worldwide trend. The so-called snack culture that fills people's spare time is dominating the world, expanding its area from the cultural sector to the overall economy. This undergraduate student loves to watch cultural contents on her smartphone. Every day, she watches popular webtoon series and replays TV programs that she missed the previous day in short edited versions so she has no time to be bored. 아무래도 학교 왔다 갔다 하면서 보기에는 짧은 웹툰이나 뭐 짧게 편집된 동영상 같은 게 보기 편해가지고 자주 이용하는 것 같고요. 그 아무래도 시간이 부족하니까 재밌는 부분만 편집된 거 그런 걸 주로 보는 편이에요. With the wide use of mobile devices, the snack culture, a term that combines snack and culture, is becoming a worldwide trend. Rather than going to offline cartoon shops or bookstores, people prefer watching various cultural contents on their smartphones. Snack culture라는 말은 어, 시간과 장소에 구애받지 않고 즐기는 마치 스낵처럼 출퇴근 시간이나 점심 시간 같이 짜투리 시간 동안에 즐길 수 있도록 된 문화 콘텐츠를 소비하는 것으로서 그와 같은 라이프스타일 또는 트렌드를 의미합니다. 이와 같은 현상은 2007년 IT 매거진 와이어드에서 처음 소개된 이후로 그와 관련된 방송 콘텐츠, 음악, 웹툰 등 다양한 콘텐츠들을 아우르고 있습니다. By just moving a finger, you can enjoy various media in a short period of time. Such phenomena have actually changed people's smartphone usage patterns. A survey on purposes of smartphone usage showed that people's use of mobile phones' traditional functions such as phone calls and text messages has fallen, while the use of relatively short content such as social media sites, videos and music has increased. Uh, 이 스낵 컬처가 소비자들 사이에서 큰 인기를 끄는 이유는 아무래도 사람들이 문화나 온라인 콘텐츠를 즐기는 중간에 그 매체들의 변화들의 그 근거를 찾을 수가 있는데요. 가령 TV 앞에서 긴 호흡의 60분짜리 드라마를 보는 사람들보다는 스마트폰으로 굉장히 짧은 동영상을 보시는 분들이 훨씬 많아졌습니다. 그 다양한 콘텐츠를 즐길 수 있는 이 도구들이 짧게 짧게 소비자들이 문화를 즐기는 형태로 발전하고 있다고 볼수 있고요. 또 역으로 그것을 즐기는 소비자들의 인내심도 굉장히 짧아지고 있습니다. 
그래서 굉장히 긴 컨텐츠보다는 짧은 컨텐츠, 두꺼운 베스트셀러보다는 얇은 책들 이런 것들을 즐기기 시작하는 거죠. Webtoon is the best example of the snack culture. Webtoons refer to animated comic strips distributed through the internet. They were created along with the development of the internet and depression in the publishing market in the late 1990s. And since then, the Webtoon market has grown further with the development of mobile devices, establishing itself as a strong leading player of the mass culture. The primary Webtoon market is estimated to reach about 300 million US dollars this year and rise to about 500 million US dollars after three years. And now we have gotten more used to seeing people who enjoy watching short video clips rather than movies or dramas with long running times. Instead of watching the entire videos, it has become a daily routine for us to see short video clips, some have edited or images captured by some. Such a phenomenon is also noticeable in social media sites. Twitter's video platform Vine is a service that shares six-second videos. In just 10 months after its launch, its global subscribers exceeded 40 million. Neighbor's messaging app, Line, is providing the Snap Movie feature that enables users to shoot 4 to 10 second videos and share them with their friends with some background music. A smartphone film festival has made headlines by launching a 6 second film segment. 예, 일반적으로 스낵컬처라고 하면 스낵컬처로 기획된 아주 짧은 스토리도 얘기하지만 긴 스토리들의 일부분들을 이렇게 소화하는 것들도 스낵컬처 현상으로 볼수 있습니다. 그와 같이 스낵컬처는 아주 짧은 단편들 그리고 길게 연결된 장편들이 서로 앞으로 어떻게 유기적으로 결합할 수 있는 형식을 만들어내냐에 따라서 좀더 지배적인 현상이 될지 또는 일시적인 어떤 하나 미디어에 특화된 현상이 될지는 지켜봐야 할 점이라고 생각됩니다. But YouTube has introduced TrueView service that gives viewers an option to skip the video ads after seeing the first five seconds of the introduction. And since then, the war to capture consumers' eyes has begun and people who enjoy seeing ads have increased. Rather than watching and owning things for a long time, people are quickly obtaining information and consuming things. Snackization can also be easily found in other industries. 소비자들이 이제는 모든 것들을 스낵화하기 시작합니다. 우리가 예를 들어서 그 재미있는 TV 드라마 중에서 내가 좋아하는 배우만 나온 것을 잘라서 그것만 짧게 짧게 즐기는 문화를 문화적인 측면에서의 스낵컬처라면 이제는 기업과의 관계에서도 그렇게 변하는데요. 가령 백화점의 3개월짜리 문화 그 센터 강좌는 별로 인기가 없고 하루하루 즐길 수 있는 그 1일 수강권이 큰 인기를 끄는 것 이런 것들도 스낵컬처의 하는 현상이라고 볼수 있고요. 또 대용량 제품보다는 소용량 제품 심지어는 화장품 그 가, 화장품 가게에서 한 3일 만에 다 써버릴 수 있는 그런 제품을 만드는 것들 이런 것들도 문화적인 경제적인 스낵화 현상 이렇게 볼수 있습니다. With the gradual weakening of brand loyalty, consumers tend to quickly consume fashion items or cosmetics that look good and motivate them to buy impulsively. The jumping phenomenon, in which consumers experience diverse range of products. And thus, weakening differences among brands is also accelerating snackization of industrial sectors. Beyond culture, traditional areas of retail industry is combining with a snack culture to create a new industry. 일반적으로 스낵 컬처라고 하면 하나의 문화 트렌드로 치부하기 쉽습니다. 하지만 이와 같이 미디어와 생활의 라이프스타일과 결부된 트렌드들은 상대적으로 오래가는 트렌드가 되기 쉽지요. 그래서 여기에 국한된 활동들 뿐 아니라 이걸 바탕으로 해서 만들어낼 수 있는 다양한 산업 영역들, 또 새로운 컨텐츠 영역들, 또 예술 장르들을 찾아낸다면 우리 산업이 좀더 지금보다는 크리에이티브해지고 더 풍부해질 수 있는 기반이 되지 않을까 싶습니다. A fiery battle between people who want to enjoy short and easy aspects of culture and companies that want to capture their hearts has begun. A worldwide boom in the snack-like culture could last for quite a long time. The 
Davos Forum brings together some of the world's most prominent leaders in the fields of politics, business and economics to discuss the key issues of the day. But on the sidelines of Davos this year, another meeting took place that drew some attention. It was an informal gathering of ministers of the WTO, or World Trade Organization. So what was discussed at this meeting and how might it impact Korea moving forward? These are some of the questions we have for our guest today. He should be able to answer these questions because he did indeed attend that meeting. His Korea's Deputy Minister for Trade, Jae Kyung Lim, welcome to Bizline. Hello, thank you for having me here. Well, thanks for taking time, mm -hmm. we appreciate mm -hmm. it. Now, tell me a little bit about the, uh, the format for this. Mm -hmm. It's an informal WTO ministerial gathering. Mm -hmm. um, it was held on the margins of Davos, mm -hmm. Why was it held at Davos and what made it you know, informal? The Swiss government has been organizing this meeting mm. for more than 10 years now as a side event to the Davos Forum. Uh, each year they invite trade ministers of uh, 25 or 30 countries, mm -hmm. also the director general of the WTO, okay. and ask them to discuss uh, the most pressing issues that uh, a global trading system and the WTO phase. This meeting is uh, quite important in uh, two aspects. Mm. Uh, first of all, all the major uh, members of the WTO, including the United States, European Union, and China, and countries that represent major groups mm. or uh, groups of like-minded countries are represented uh, at the meeting. And okay. secondly, this meeting is held at the start of the year, so naturally it more or less sets the tone and direction of the WTO activities of the year. Ah, okay. Well, that mm. is important. Mm. Let, let's talk more broadly about mm. the, the WTO and the, the DDA, the mm. Doha Development Agenda. Right. This was designed to lower tariffs, it was designed to increase mm. global trade, mm. and these talks, the DDA talks, kicked off in 2001. Mm. Since 2008, they've been pretty largely mm -hmm. dead mm -hmm. in the water. Mm. Um, given that, as far as I can see, mm. global trade volumes mm. are in pretty good shape, mm -hmm. is the DDA mm. redundant? Um, no, I don't think so. Uh, mm. Actually, many WTO members believe that uh, they need major trade deals, like uh, concluding uh, DDA negotiations yeah. now more than ever. Traditionally, uh, trade worked as kind of a very strong engine for the growth of the world economy. Mm. If you look at the numbers, you can see that the, the growth rate of world trade has been always about double of growth rate of uh, world economy. But in recent years, the growth rate of uh, world trade and world economy have become more or less uh, similar. Mm. And as a result, the world economy has been suffering, recording a uh, comparatively lower rate of growth. So you're convinced that the world trade does need a, a steroid, it needs a shot in the arm. But mm -hmm. um, that having been said, the, the latest, uh, and I suppose most much less ambitious program for the mm. WTO, given mm. that the DDA has been stalled, was the Bali package, which mm. was inked last year. Mm. Um, and there's been a lot of talk about the Bali package. Mm. Um, I think people inside the WTO have said this means the WTO is finally back in business, mm -hmm. even though the bigger negotiations, DDA, are stalled. Mm. Um, speaking realistically, has mm. the Bali package thus far delivered any real concrete benefits for Korea? Um, yes. Um, the Bali package as a whole represents very positive development for the DDA negotiations, as well as uh, for the WTO. Uh, it covers uh, several important areas of the negotiations, mm. but the most important among them is trade facilitation agreement. This agreement is about streamlining uh, customs procedures uh, so that the traders can reduce their time and cost in clearing customs. Mm. And by some estimate, this trade facilitation agreement can create benefits to world economy of worth more than one trillion uh, US dollars. Annual? Uh, right, right. And Korea is, of course, a major trading country. Sure. 
So it is certain that uh, Korea is to gain huge benefits from this agreement. By the estimate of the one of the leading economic institutions mm. uh, in Korea, Korea can expect uh, additional growth of uh, uh, her export by more than 7%. And Sorry, purely by trade facilitation right, through right, customs, right, right, right. 7%. Right. That having been said, Korea, like other countries, mm. is very enthusiastically mm. um, signing FTAs or mm -hmm. free trade agreements mm. with nations and territories, including, mm. of course, the EU, the USA, and most recently China. These mm. are very much the big boys of world trade. Mm. Does this suggest to you mm. that Washington, Brussels, Beijing, mm. and Seoul mm. um, have lost confidence in the bigger picture of WTO negotiations, notably mm. the DDA? I don't think so. Actually, free trade agreements and the WTO trade negotiations are expressions of a will to make world trade uh, more open and free. Mm. Uh, they just offer two different channels. And um, we believe that uh, uh, these two different channels are not mutually exclusive. Mm. Uh, on the contrary, they complement each other. For example, it's relatively easier to experience gains from bilateral FTA sure. deals. But once the public and the business community see that uh, they can get concrete benefits from trade deals, they will support more strongly the WTO uh, multilateral trade negotiations. Aside from DDA, mm. let's talk about the other multilateral deals mm. that Korea's um, currently in the process of entering, joining, or negotiating. Mm. I guess the big one is the US-led TPP, the mm. Trans-Pacific mm. Partnership, mm. which covers most of the Pacific economies. Mm. Mm. What's the status of that deal, or Korea's place in, in that deal? Well, TPP negotiations have been underway for several years now. Mm. Unfortunately, Korea is not uh, among the countries that are participating in the TPP negotiations. Mm. But Korea has expressed interest in joining the TPP negotiations at some future time. Mm. According to the information that uh, we get uh, thus far, uh, the TPP negotiations are very close to conclusion and the uh, participating countries are aiming to conclude negotiations in the first half of this year. Um, there are pros and cons for Korea. Uh, in joining the TPP negotiations. But many experts believe that in the long term, uh, Korea can gain a lot by joining the TPP negotiations. So the government has been uh, consulting with the domestic stakeholders, including mm -hmm. uh, the business community, on whether to join the TPP negotiations. Mm -hmm. and, and once the conclusion we, is to join. Uh, we have not made the final decision okay. yet, but once we reach a consensus to join the TPP negotiations, we will start uh, consulting with uh, uh, 12 participating countries uh -huh. uh, in more serious manner about when and how Korea can join the TPP. Okay. Uh, from what you were just saying, it suggests that the uh, the consensus within perhaps your ministry, within the private sector is we need to be in this, Korea needs to be in the TPP. So what's the holdup? I said that there are pros and cons yeah. of join, uh, for Korea to, to join the TPP mm -hmm. negotiations. Mm -hmm. And um, the government has to take into consideration uh, all the factors, mm -hmm. positive and negative. And although there is growing consensus within the Korean society about the possible benefits of joining the TPP negotiations, there are still some people who are not uh, so favorable. Mm. And these would be the agricultural sector or? Yes, and there are also some uh, manufacturing sector mm. uh, which is not enthusiastic about joining the TPP negotiations. Okay. Let's move to more general mm. talk about mm. trade rather than simply mm. Uh, mm. FTAs mm. and uh, multilateral um, mm. trade agreements. Now, Korea is currently facing the, the plus 
of low mm. oil prices, mm. but also the minus of a weak yen, mm. which mm. is particularly critical because, of course, so many Korean exporters compete with Japanese mm. exporters mm. in the same space. Um, as Deputy Trade Minister, mm. how do you see the overall trade environment for Korea in mm. the year ahead? It's very difficult to say uh, in a definitive manner whether it's going to be a good year mm. or a bad year. Uh, for Korean exporters. But even so, we are, we're putting you on the hot spot. Right. So <laughs> give, give us an answer, <laughs> Deputy Minister. Well, I should say the picture is rather mixed one. Yeah. For positive side, the U.S. economy has mm. been growing very strongly yeah. in recent quarters. But on the other hand, uh, the other major trading partners of Korea, including China, mm. Europe, and Russia, their economic outlook is not very bright. And of course, uh, we have uh, the good news of uh, falling oil prices. Mm. And many people believe that uh, in the mid to long term, uh, the drop in oil prices uh, will be a huge plus for the Korean economy. But in the short term, the drop in oil prices also have negative side because we export a lot of uh, petrochemical mm. products. Sure. And the uh, drop in oil prices will put down all the pressure on that on, sector. On the sector. And beyond what we've been mm. discussing, Deputy mm. Minister, tell us you know, what's on your plate for mm. the year ahead. What do you think is going to be keeping you mm. personally um, mm. particularly busy mm. in 2015? I can think of uh, about three issues that okay. uh, we have to deal with. First of all, as you said, that uh, we concluded uh, major trade deals last year, mm -hmm. including our free trade agreement with uh, China. And this year, we have to make sure that uh, our National Assembly will uh, pass Sign the ratification we'll bill this, yeah. uh, for the Korea-China FTA agreement. Mm. At the same time, we have to work hard to develop a robust plan uh, so that our business community can take uh, advantage of the chances, new opportunities that this uh, Korea-China free trade agreement offers. Mm. So far, we have concluded 15 free trade agreements uh -huh. with 52 countries, but there are still many other countries with which we do not have a, a trade agreement, mm -hmm. but offer a great deal of uh, business potential. Yeah. Uh, so we have to identify uh, the leading candidates. And uh, with the agreement of those countries, we have to start yep. new negotiations. Sure. And you mentioned you've got one more issue, mm. which mm. is uh, going to be keeping you very busy. Mm. What is that? It's uh, rice. That's a tangled issue. Right. Yeah. Uh, as you know, the government has made a very difficult decision yep. last year of opening our market for imported rice, right. but with a very high tariff rate of 513 uh, percent. Mm -hmm. We need to have the full consent of the WTO members of our plan mm. to set this high rate of uh, tariff for rice. And um, five countries so far raised objection okay. to our plan. So our challenge is to persuade those countries that, that our tariff rate for rice has been established in accordance with the WTO rules. Mm. So that, that's a big task for you mm -hmm. in the internal mm -hmm. uh, negotiations right. over the year. Mm -hmm. It will keep you busy. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Deputy Minister, thank you very much mm -hmm. for taking time out of what I know is a very, very busy mm -hmm. schedule to join us on mm -hmm. BizLine. Mm -hmm. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you indeed. We frequently use apps that recommend us good restaurants when we choose a menu for eating out. But are the recommended restaurants really famous and verified? App of the Week is 30-year-old Famous Restaurants, an app that only selects good restaurants with a history of more than 30 years. The app has a list of about 1,000 restaurants, and it introduces the one that is nearest to the user's current location. Moreover, users can also get recommendations by region or menu. 
When you select a restaurant, you can check detailed information on the restaurant, such as its location, operating hours, and prices, as well as frank comments and ratings by those who went to the restaurant. Now let's enjoy good meals at restaurants verified by many people over a long period of time. As economies worldwide increasingly focus on renewable energy, the key task facing the solar sector is to upgrade efficiencies. Now, Korea has recently developed a new technology that significantly upgrades the capacity of solar cells. So, what materials are they using and how sunny is the outlook for this new technology? Let's take a look. From factory to cars and electronic appliances, modern society entirely runs on energy. The more advanced the society becomes, the more energy it needs. Fossil fuels are still the world's most widely circulated and consumed energy source, but petroleum is expected to be completely depleted in 60 years and coal in 112 years. Solar energy has emerged as an important source of renewable energy that one day could compensate for fossil fuel. 이 환경을 보존하면서 에너지를 얻, 얻는 거가 궁극적인 목표입니다. 인류 에너지 문제를 해결하기 위해서는. 그런데 태양 에너지는 어, 쉽게 얘기, 얘기를 드리면 태양 에너지가 지구 지표면에 도달하는 한 시간 동안 도달하는 양을 전부 다 수집할 수 있다면 인류가 1년 동안 쓸 에너지 양이 나옵니다. 그리고 태양 에너지는 무한히 제공되는 지속 가능한 a local team has made a breakthrough in hybrid devices in solar power. The hybrid solar battery uses a metallic crystal structure of an organic compound called perovskite. Perovskite라는 것은 어, 물질이 이루고 있는 결정 구조의 이름입니다. 그러니까 어떤 특정 물질을 지칭하는 건 아니고요. 보통 무기 물질의 perovskite 구조를 갖는 물질이 지구상에 엄청 많습니다. 그 많은 물질들을 전부 다 이런 태양전지를 이용하는 건 아니고요. 저희가 개발한 태양전지는 무기물과 유기물이 혼합된 형태이면서 그 페로스카이트를 가지고 갖고 있는 그런 물질을 사용해서 만든 태양전지를 페로스카이트 태양전지라 부르고 있습니다. Perovskites can turn into solar cells through relatively easy and cheap processes. The pigment of perovskite solution of organic and inorganic materials is dropped and spread evenly upon a sheet of glass or metal electron foil. When the sheet is heated at 100 degrees, a thin film is coated with perovskite materials with properties in efficient charge extraction and ability to absorb sunlight from a broad spectral range. We made the perovskite to 그것을 열 처리해 줌으로써 원하는 높은 수준의 하이 퀄리티의 페럭스카이트 방막을 얻을 수 있는 과정입니다. Local researchers were able to make uniform perovskite material and enhance its quantum efficiency value or electrical sensitivity to sunlight to achieve solar cells with efficiency of up to 20.1%. Its conversion efficiency, or the percentage of the solar energy converted into electrical energy, is tantamount to commercialized silicone solar cells. The bigger benefit of perovskite solar cells is in its simple manufacturing process and cost that is just a third to make silicone solar cells. Perovskite energy is capsule materials to be made from waste energy. Waste energy is what? It's the amount of energy used. 쉽게 고속으로 만들 수 있다는 장점이 있고요. 그러면은 어 대량으로 만들 수 있기 때문에 값싸게 만들 수 있고 그런 저온에서 뭐 실온에서도 만들 수 있기 때문에 어 우리가 저희 주로 사용하는 값싼 기판을 사용할 수가 있습니다. 뭐 플라스틱 기판이나 뭐 이런 뭐 비닐이나 Another local research team has also developed flexible perovskite solar cells to power wearable devices. Because existing silicone solar cells must be processed through high temperature heating of over 500 degrees, they cannot be used upon flexible plastic platforms that are weak against heat. The local team has developed a new manufacturing process to produce flexible perovskite cells without the use of high temperature fabrication. Flexible plastic plastic. 
또 이제 폴더블 할수 있고 접을 수가 있습니다. 그래서 굉장히 가벼운 기판에 같은 에너지를 이제 저희가 수송할 수 있는 그러니까 이동성이 굉장히 좋은 태양전지라고 할수 있겠습니다. The newly developed solar cell doesn't lose efficiency when wrapped up over the wrist and bend it a thousand times. If commercialized and employed on smartwatches or other wearable devices, it will simply need to be exposed to daylight for recharging. 옷으로 이제 착용할 수도 있고 전원 또한 그러니까 이 파워 솔루션 또한 웨어러블이고 패처블 돼야 됩니다. 이제 그런 과정에서 아, 이 태양 전지는 이 플라스틱을 기반으로 하기 때문에 웨어러블 그런 일렉트로닉 디바이스의 그 중요한 파워 소스로도 굉장히 큰 역할을 할 것으로 기대되고 있습니다. The global solar cell market that generated revenue of around 85 billion US dollars last year is estimated to surge to 230 billion worth by the year 2030 through broad applications. Perovskite solar cells are more cost effective among existing solar power sources. 태양전지로 1W당 0.5불에 해당하는 그런 단가를 맞춰야 되는데 아직까지도 기존의 테크놀로지로선 그걸 달성하기가 어렵습니다. 근데 이 페럽스카이트 태양전지는 기존의 그 소재 가격이 굉장히 이제 저렴하게 하고 또 공정도 굉장히 저렴 솔루션 프로세스 때문에 저렴하기 때문에 아 기존의 그 예상하기로는 0.3 달러 퍼 와트까지도 어 가능할 수 있는 태양전지로서 그러니까 어 패러다임을 바꿀 수 있는 태양전지라고 생각합니다. If it can be scaled up, it will pave the way for solar power to lead the renewable energy market. 실제 상용화하기 위해서는 고속으로 대량으로 만들 수 있는 그런 공정 기술이 필요하고요. 그다음에 그보다 더 중요한 건이 만들어진 태양 전지가 얼마나 오랫동안 사용할 수 있을까. 이게 환경 친화적인 물질로 대체할 수 있는 그런 조성에 관한 연구가 필요할 것으로 보입니다. The local industry has worked with perovskite solar cells for just three years. But once the cheap-to-make and highly efficient energy source becomes popular solar solution, Korean technology could benefit from its head start on the development. For housewives, it looked like a dream come true when robots designed to clean the house first hit the market. Alas, when consumers actually got these robots home, they soon discovered that reality didn't match the hype. But now, a second generation of service robots, powered by further advances in ICT, are coming to the market. And they offer a much wider range of services than their predecessors. So, let's meet a few of these new generation cleaning robots that may soon be moving to your home. The robots are coming, and it's starting from our home. Let's meet various home service robots that interact with people and are set to become new members of households with the help of information and communications technology. A robot has captured the people's eyes during this year's Consumer Electronics Show held in January. A small tablet-linked robot controlled lighting and home appliances with voice commands and welcomed the owner who came home from work. Major foreign media have introduced the smart home robot as a key spectacle of the event, highlighting the point that it can be immediately commercialized. A Korean robotics startup has developed this robot. This robot communicates with people, recognizes its situations, and responds to them, but it has not applied the latest artificial intelligence. Using Wi-Fi, the robot, which serves as the interface, controls the tablet PC, and the information the robot has obtained is sent to social networking sites. The user can send the robot commands through a message using their smartphones or tablet PCs to remotely control and manage internet-connected devices at home. The robot is used as a hub in the smart home era that is approaching us. Robots are a tool, and you can use a tablet to use a avatar to use a 
어플루테우스가 있고 그 다음에 각종 데이터들을 와이파이나 통신을 통해서 쉽게 로봇하고 연계를 시킬 수 있는 그런 장점이 있어서 태블릿을 택했습니다. There are various views of which device will control the smart home in which all the devices and consumer electronics at home will be connected and controlled. One of the views was the home service robot, but the robot has another big advantage other devices do not have. 스마트 홈에서의 현재 이동성 보장이란 측면에서 이런 로봇의 성장 가능성을 크게 보고 있고요. 그래서 현재 스마트 홈에서는 스마트폰하고 스마트 TV가 중심이 되는데요. 향후에는 어, 이동성을 가진 그런 서비스 로봇과 그리고 사람의, 사람에게 이제 항상 붙어 있는 웨어러블 기기의 중요성이 더욱 높아질 것으로 전망이 되고 있습니다. When the house owner is away, it becomes the surveillance camera to monitor the house using its IP cameras and telepresence features. It also enables users outside the house to video chat with their family members in the house. This company is set to launch this robot at a reasonable price of about 800 US dollars. The industry forecasts that the need for service robots at home will rise more and more amid the increasing number of nuclear families and an aging society. 어, 온도가 막 높아진다. 그럼 화재에 대한 어떤 감지, 그 다음에 누가 침입을 했다. 그에 대한 감지도 할수 있고 소리도 감지하고 모션도 감지하기 때문에 어떤 사고나 어, 사건에 대한 어떤 어, 통지를 사람들한테 해줄 수 있는 게 로봇이 가정 내 역할이라고 할수 있습니다. The most familiar home robots are definitely cleaning robots. They have also been further evolving recently with the help of ICT. As the smartphone activates the cleaning robot, it begins to clean. Using the smartphone, the user can also move the cleaner to a desirable place. With its built-in near-field communications and Wi-Fi modules, the cleaning robot can be remotely controlled by the smartphone. The role of smart cleaning robots do not just end at cleaning. Using their feature of moving around everywhere in the house, cleaning robots nowadays also serve as home CCTVs. 어, 집에 그 과거에 있던 이 세탁기에 어떤 모듈을 달면 어, 청소 로봇이 거기 고객이 컨트롤해서 보내서 어, 세탁기를 돌린다든지 집안의 상태를 체크를 해서 에어컨을 돌리게 한다든지 어, 다른 기기들과 얼마든지 어, 소통을 하면서 그 가치를 줄수 있는 그러면서도 실제로 이동할 수 있다라는 이 장점을 충분히 다른 기기들과 그 베네핏을 더 만들어낼 수 있는 아주 좋은 장점을 가지고 있다고 생각합니다. According to the Korea Association of Robot Industry, the country's personal service robot market is still timid at 277.8 million US dollars. Even these home service robots in most cases just have cleaning functions. Compared to the sharp development in industrial robots in the past few decades, which contributed to the improvement of our productivity, the development of personal service robots has been somewhat slow. There are still technological limits to expect robots to have people-like intelligence or be able to exchange emotions. So the industry is approaching the home service robot sector in terms of smart moving devices that combine ICT and sensors. Experts believe that such multi-purpose smart moving devices have a hefty growth potential. 아무래도 이제 인간과 비슷한 휴머노이드는 이제 그 기술적인 구현에 있어서 모터나 이런 것이 많이 들어가서 가격적인 면에 좀 부담이 되기 때문에 현재는 그거보다 이제 바퀴를 중심으로 한 청소 로봇에서 스마트 로봇을 진화하지 않을까. 가정형 서비스 로봇은 이동성 제공과 인공지능을 바탕으로 해서 비서의 역할이라든가 애완동물의 역할도 해줄 수가 있고요. 다양한 보조 기능을 제공해 줄수 있습니다. 그래서 향후에 이런 가정용 서비스 로봇은 스마트 홈과 연동해서 사람에게 더 나은 삶을 제공해 줄수 있는 그런 보조 산업으로서 큰 성장 동력을 가지고 있다고 얘기할 수 있겠습니다. Armed with mobility, latest ICT, and competitive prices, home service robots have quickly come into our lives. 
We look forward to seeing what roles home robots will play in the smart home era that is approaching us. In North Korea, a person doesn't choose his or own job. The state decides what jobs its citizens will do. Even so, some jobs are inevitably more popular than others. And the way to secure these desirable jobs is through bribery. So, what jobs are most popular in North Korea right now and why? Unemployment is a common problem in both the developed and underdeveloped world. But there is one place on Earth where it is not an issue, North Korea. Can that be true and what kind of jobs do people prefer in a tightly controlled country like North Korea? The North Korean constitution stipulates that all citizens are free to choose jobs upon their aspiration and talent. But like everything else under its socialist principle, jobs are decided and rationed by the state and are not up to the individual. 전체적으로 직장을 다 배치를 해 주기 때문에 100% 배치. 그래서 실업자는 없습니다. 뭐한 직장에 한 사람이 할 일을 열 사람을 배치를 하는 경우는 많아요. 그러면 막상 직장에 나가 보면 할 일은 하나도 없지만 어쨌든 실업자는 없는 거죠. 공식적으로. Everyone on paper is employed. But the catch is that you have no say in the job given to you. So how are the jobs distributed? 북한에서는 보통 이제 직업 같은 경우라기보다는 출신 성분들이 대를 물리는 경우가 많이 있죠. 왜냐하면 이제 기본적인 계층 자체가 아버지가 예를 들어 항일무장 혁명 투쟁에 참가했었다고 한다면 북한은 기본적으로 굉장히 출신 성분이 좋은 것이고 이 출신 성분을 하루아침에 바꿀 수 있는 것이 아니기 때문에. 어떻게 본다면 이제 그런 측면에 대를 물려서 간다고 할 수가 있습니다. What determines the line of profession in North Korea is the person's family background. Family tree matters more if one is a member of the party who has access to power and wealth in North Korea. 간부가 되는 건 집안의 토대 그 성분이 나쁘면 될수 없습니다. 못 들어가요. 아예 들어가지도 못할 뿐더러 어떻게 어떻게 해서 들어갔다고 하더라도 어 나중에 이렇게 직업의 배치를 받았어요. 좋은 직장에 배치 받았는데 어 살다가 보니 그 할아버지 때뭐 누가 뭘 어떻게 잘못해서 뭐 성분이 나쁜 건데 살짝 한줄 정도 위조했다. 이게 들통이 나면 그 자리에서 떨려 나야 됩니다. Ordinary people who are workers get the jobs their fathers had. 이 사람이 정말 원하는 곳에 가서 제대로 일할 수 있게 하겠다. 이런 게 관료의 목표는 아닌 거예요. 그러다 보니 가장 쉽게 해결하는 게 농민의 아들은 농민이 되고 어뭐 노동자 애들은 노동자가 되고 아버지가 탄광에서 일하면 아들도 탄광에서 일하고 염전에서 아버지가 일하면 아들도 염전에서 일하고 이렇게 그냥 뭐그 집에서 하는 거를 그대로 하기 이런 게 가장 쉽고 Career path like any other state command in North Korea must be obliged without questioning but money can make exceptions What jobs are North Koreans willing to pay bribes to exchange for In the past an official of the party was the most prestigious profession as one cannot get it unless he or she is from the so-called noble family but now that the underground economy is where money is made, merchants, retailers, and renters have become envious professions. 유통업자라고 할 때는 대거래를 하는 사람들 이야기를 해요. 그래서 만약에 그 해산이라는 곳에가 이제 곳이 이제 중국하고 그 물물 교환이 많이 일어나는 장소다 보니까 거기서 물건을 떼다가 내륙에 있는 그뭐 저기 안쪽 마을에 뭐 평양이라든지 그 근처. 이런 데다가 물건을 대거래를 하는 사람들을 유통업자라고 그러거든요. 그래서 마진율이 굉장히 많이 있고 다음에 시장 매대 각 장마당에다 보면은 그 임대를 해 주는 사람들이 있어요. 이런 사람들이 그 앉은 자리 자리세를 받으니까 인기가 있고 Another interesting career that is exceptionally popular in North Korea is driver. 
북한의 운전수라면 화물 트럭, 화물 2.5톤 이상들이 트럭을 이제 갖고 있는데, 북한 교통이 안 좋다 보니까 뭐 대, 대, 대다수 사람들 걸어 다녀야 되는데, 그 서비차라고 해서 돈을 이제 그 북한 돈으로 뭐 100원, 200원 내게 되면은 어느 지역에서 그냥 태워다 줍니다. 근데 그, 그 돈은 다 운전수 거죠. 그러다 보니까 이제 그 2.5톤 트럭이 되면 사람을 한 40명 실어요. 그러면 100원씩만 해도 40명이면 4,000원이죠. 한달 월급이 3,000원인데 돈 많이 벌잖아요. 그래서 선방에 있는 직종입니다. If a driver is a high earning job in North Korea, how about a doctor, which is a respected and well earning profession in other parts of the world? 이쪽에서 굉장히 큰 인기가 있는 직업이 좀 북한에서는 별로 인기가 없는 직업 가운데 하나가 아마 의사가 아닐까 싶어요. 북한에서 의사는 그냥 노동자의 하나로 분류하기 때문에 상대적으로 이렇게 높은 평가를 받지 않는 상황입니다. And how about women? What do they prefer? 여자들 같은 경우는 이제 선전대라고 해서 그 남들이 일을 할때 그 노래를 하거나 어떤 거 시키면 딴따라라고 나쁜 표현을 하면 그건데 그래서 이런 사람들이 좀 인기가 있습니다. 왜냐하면 그 당감부한테 잘 보여야 되고 그리고 이제 그 남들이 일할 때 자기는 노래만 하면 되니까 그래서 일명 이제 우리는 일할 때그 그 선전대도 뭐 매미라 그랬거든요. 남들은 땀 흘리고 일하는 데 가서 그런 밑에서 노래만 한다고 해서 굉장히 싫어했어요. North Korea's first lady, Ri s e o l c h u had been a singer of state music troupe u n a s u Orchestra. It appears a job on the stage and entertainment business is also popular in North Korea. The changes in popular professions underscore changes in the North Korean society, increasingly placing more importance on practicality and money. But regardless of their aspirations, most people have to stick to the career the state has chosen for them. 북한 사회 시스템 전체가 이 조직화된 전체가 사회라고 하는 속에서 개인이 매몰되는 경향을 좀 가지고 있죠. 그런 측면에서 본다면 전반적으로 개인이라고 하는 위치 자체가 직업 선택뿐만 아니라 학교 교육이라든가 생활 속에서 많이 제한되는 것이 북한 어떤 한계라고 할 수가 있을 것 같습니다. The reality behind zero joblessness and migration in jobs in North Korea is zero choice of profession and individual happiness. And that's all we have time for on BizLine this week, but do join us again next week because we'll be encountering a new group of consumers that the Korean retail sector is very, very firmly focused on. They are urban grannies, women in their 50s and 60s who do have grandchildren but who, unlike the grandmothers of the past, are investing their time and their money in themselves rather than their families. We'll be meeting some of these urban grannies next time. So, do join us then, but that's all for now. I'm Andrew Salmon. This was BizLine. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.